traveling, living, working, and painting full-time in my Class B van, along with my dog, Willie Nelson. I'm Milo, and this is Milo Talks. 25 years ago, as a, an examiner for the PSIA, Professional Ski Instructors of America, I had a student come in with a brachial birth defect of his right arm and had no strength in his right arm. But growing up, his mom put him into drum lessons, water ski lessons, <laughs> never admitted that he had a birth defect and no, no strength in his underdeveloped right arm. And so Paul ended up being a great ski instructor. 25 years ago, we've stayed in touch and since then has become a TED speaker, an international corporate trainer, and has, ranged, uh, and has uh, raised over $380,000 for Challenged Athletes Foundation by climbing the seven highest mountains on the planet along with his wife. And in 2010, after finishing Mount Everest, um, on the 10 year anniversary, a year and a half ago, he challenged me to do 29,029 feet a month in vertical climb where I lived in San Clemente on either my bike or running. And I took the challenge to get a signed copy of his book. <laughs> <laughs> but I continued doing it after one month and running five miles every morning, trail running, and riding my bike and getting rid of my car so that I have, I'm just, I don't own an automobile. So I ride everything in San Clemente where I live by bicycle. And then I decided to do it instead of just one month, I'd do it for a year. So I did it every single month and continued with the challenge. And then I got an invitation to my 50 year high school reunion in New Jersey. And I figured, why not? I just kind of, I do the workout every day. Why don't I just string, string it out across the country? And so I planned it. And on April 20th of 2021, I left, put my back tire into the Pacific Ocean and got on my bike and started riding. And I figured there's only one charity I want to work with. And that's Challenge Athletes Foundation from Paul's Influence. So... I'm riding at a penny a mile. So if I ride 45 miles a day, you owe me 45 cents. <laughs> so, <laughs> the whole thing is 2,899 miles. Okay. So if I do the whole thing, it's um, a sponsor or a donation would be $28.99. And the route that I'm taking is the Race Across America route, which is a race, bicycle race. And the winner does this whole race in seven and a half days from coast to coast. I'm doing it in 109. So. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a great point. So it, you're yeah. taking your time. I'm taking three months. <laughs> <laughs> and and a friend, of, Yeah. A friend of mine has uh, a lot of automobile dealerships. He says, you're not going to do this alone. Let me give you a van. So he donated a, a Honda. It's uh, the uh, Victory Automotive Group. Okay. And Jeff Capo, the owner, said, take a van and turn it into my dealership in Boston when you're done with it. And the van is not really for you because you slept in a tent. I sleep in a the, tent. The, I'm not going to sleep in the van with a van driver. <laughs> so I so just you sleep have a driver. Tent. I have five drivers. Five drivers. First okay. one liked to play golf. So he'd play golf while I'm riding my bike. The second one likes to fish. The third one's going to be riding horses. The fourth one goes to um, uh, amusement parks. And the fifth one is actually one of my high school reunion guys. And he's going to go from Pittsburgh in and uh, we'll end up at the reunion. He lives in Vegas. So I've got five drivers that have agreed to take sections of the country and um, sleep in the van, and I'll sleep in the tent, and um, I ride my bike every day. I love it. Absolutely love to ride my bike. So this has become a lifestyle. This is more it's, than just... It's an extension of, of my lifestyle. Right. So you've turned your lifestyle into purposeful, um, charitable giving. And also to inspire others and by telling them I'm going to do it, they inspire me. And then together we inspire other people. Don't you think that there are certain types of people in the world though? There are athletes and there are non-athletes. There are people who, um, no, no, I, you I think believe, I believe everyone's an everyone's athlete. An athlete. <laughs> yeah. Everyone. I'm not an athlete. You are. I Tell me how I'm an athlete. If you had something that said you have to accomplish this to save this person's life, a loved one, you'd do it. 
because you'd be inspired by that. But what you have to do is you have to work out every day and, you, and, and, there's, and somewhere inside there, you'd find the spirit that goes, wow, I enjoy this competitive. Everybody has a competitive oh. side to them. Everybody has yeah. it. It's just where, what's the ingredient that turns the switch that makes them identify what's in themselves already? It's not something that has to be added. It's there. Sure. I say I'm not an athlete in the fact of I'm more of a creative. So what inspires me is not how many miles I change walk yourself, in my No, change your self-talk, you change your life. All you have to do is say, I met a guy doing a podcast the other day at the campground, <laughs> and he he convinced me that I am an athlete. And now you say, I am an See, if you say, I am not an athlete, then that you the most common human need is to be right. Sure. Okay. No, nothing else. Sure. So if you change your self-talk, you become an athlete. But what if I don't want to be an athlete? I want to be. You're a... not inspired. Well, so, but let's flip it. Let's flip it. What if I said everybody on the planet is an artist? They Everyone are. Everyone is inspired. Everyone can be an artist. You have to practice, and you have to get out your paints, and I you agree. have to write. Yes. You can be an artist. You yes. are an artist waiting to happen. So yes. why would you not? have just been an artist instead of an athlete or just, but I am an artist. I'm an artist. I'm an athlete. I'm a a spiritual person. I'm a, I'm connected to every, I mean, if you look, look at quantum physics and divide everything down to what's the energy when you divide something in infinite, infinitely, what's the thing that's left over? Well, that energy source is in everything. So we have a connection to everything. And so if you take that, we're all artists, we're all athletes, we're all gymnasts, we're all um, physicists, we're all welders, we're all, we're all everything. It's, there's, there is no separation. And when you believe that, which I do, mm -hmm. then it's just a matter of what switch inspires which ingredient to what level. My athletic level is probably above average. And so, but if I took the other switch and change it into some form of art. My background is a professional musician. Mm. I'm a horn player. I had a full scholarship for music for college. So I started playing piano when I was like six. When I was 16, I was a composer and an arranger for 22 piece jazz band. So I have an artist inside of me. Which one do you want to develop? When, when, when Michelangelo created things he when david was carved from the marble david was already inside all he did was take the marble away to reveal david in this famous sculpture we all have that all you have to do is take away the shields that you've created around yourself to expose whatever element you choose to expose inside you so david could have been a fish could have been a if, monkey. Sure. It, it was up to the artist to decide. So you decided at some point in your life to not be a musician, to be an athlete. What was that shift? Where did that happen? I got a job as a lifeguard as a 17-year-old kid on the Jersey Shore. And I had recurring nightmares of children floating face down in a sea of blackness because I did not pay attention. And they drowned because I didn't pay attention. I'd wake up in the middle of the night in a sweat because it was my responsibility. As a 17-year-old, I decided I never wanted someone to die because of my physical inability, and I became a workaholic, a workout-aholic, a thousand sit-ups, another swim around the buoy, another row in the boat, because I didn't want someone to trust me with their children to swim in front of me, and I didn't have the physical ability to save their life. And that's where it started. So if you had not taken that lifeguard job, your life could be completely different. You could be with a Philharmonic. Or a music teacher. <laughs> Going across country playing a trumpet. <laughs> or a flugelhorn or a French horn, any of the small brass. But instead, because of a 70-year-old job, your whole life has led you to this moment where you're taking your bike to your 50-year class reunion across the country. Isn't that amazing? So this is where you've come to in your life. You live in a, you're sleeping in a tent, going cross country on your bike. Eating lentil sprouts. Eating, oh my gosh, carrying your lentil sprouts. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. <laughs> 
thank you for listening to Milo Talks. You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Milo Talks. Please be sure to subscribe and like to Milo Talks podcast on YouTube. Like to be a part of the show? You can email me at Milo Talks to Strangers at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.